so, 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 so. So, the Bears night, congrats. Sir Gabaz Knight, congratulations upon your election, and the chair recognizes you to address the Senate and those assembled. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Dalton, former Senator, and welcome to all members, and a special thanks to Judge Manning, who is not one of our favorites. But he is a personal friend. <laughs> we are here at a crucial time in history. As I looked and waited out front, I recall that in 1963, this building was open. Probably through spending in small businesses. <laughs> well, that certainly is an Elton Idlet from the first district of which I represent, Mantia, and I read that there was a Senator Foresight from Cherokee, John. And John and I represent the extremes of the geography of North Carolina as did Senator Eidlid and Forsyth. And today we stand here with two members from Mantio de Murphy. But yet today we unite ourselves in our beliefs that the government does provide for its people in different ways. Certainly one of the foremost ways is the education of its people. Without knowledge, there is no success. There is little opportunity and less progress. Through North Carolina's history, it has provided for those opportunities. With the trouble that we face, declining revenues of double digit and growing, unemployment of double digit and growing, it is more so today than at any other time in my history or Senator Soule's history that we continue to provide for a quality education for all kids that follow us in North Carolina and young adults who retrain their vision and refocus their place in life as they find new employment. The economic conditions do not bring great happiness to us today. But it is the hand that is dealt us, and it is the hand we will play with. There are many challenges besides education, transportation, our infrastructure, technology, water, sewer, the state health plan center to rent, needs uh, much help, probation, energy use, climate change, the list will continue. But the focus that will be the greatest, Senator Groot, will be the budget, because it will affect all the different facets of government. And if we craft it in the vein and the way as we should, and protect the most important ingredients of that budget, we will do well. Think of our condition today, not in a sad way or a depressed way, but think of what this budget can deliver. Think of what this session can give its people. And also think for a second that if this was the opening day and you were in South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, Virginia, you would be much worse off. And because of this body to the new members, I will tell you today, they did a yeoman's job in the past 
to protect that knowledge-based economy that we have to continue. Their condition is much worse than ours. I was thinking yesterday of a conversation I had with a young man at a 7-Eleven in Mantio where I buy coffee in the morning. And he waited for me as I came out. He said he was a boat builder and he had a family and he was unemployed and that he would like to work for me in my yard on my house, painting, doing anything, digging holes, whatever it may be, and he would work for minimum wage. He had a job that paid in excess of $20 per hour. He had health benefits, Senator Jenkins, and now he has none, and he has no money for gas for the car. He can't pay his mortgage payment to debt. And the same can be said in Murphy and any other county in this great state of North Carolina. It is through employment that you protect the wishes of the family and the needs of some. And without the recreation, the retooling of our industry of workers, North Carolina will suffer even greater and our deficit will be even larger. So this section, this session has to focus on jobs, jobs, and jobs. Now, not that we would be derelict in the other earlier mentioned difficulties and responsibilities that we have. Absolutely not. But if we create that economy, retool it, make it available for all people, we all do well. I was also uh, a bit uh, mystified by the direction that South Carolina has taken in the closure of three universities. I do not have to encourage you to protect these universities, not whatsoever. I do not have to encourage you to be frugal in your evaluation of state government, the elimination of waste, duplication, seeing that we're more efficient and we do a better job with the monies that we have. These are given. This will occur. But I would encourage you not to find your way out of this difficulty with cuts alone. There should be a more benign way of finding revenues than just cuts in itself. So as we go through this budget, do the finance, uh, the chair, Senator Clodfeller, there will be an encouragement to look at ways to find revenue that will balance the cuts against the need and the protection of education and our future in North Carolina. We have to be careful, we have to be steady, and we have to make no error. You have given me this responsibility to lead you for another session. To Senators McKissick and my great friend, Mr. Weinstein, I thank you for nominating me and seconding me to be your leader. I will do all within the powers given me and the abilities by the good Lord who looks down upon us. Godspeed and thank you.